a crippling condition. This has got to stop. This is ridiculous. Is tearing a family apart. I want my mum back. I want my kids to have their name. And stealing one woman's happiness. To think about how I am and, and how I used to be. Can the Speakmans give her a future? I want you to meet the biggest bullet of all. Before her phobia takes over. I just want to get over it. I just want it gone. Nick and Eva Speakman have been successfully treating people with phobias and anxiety disorders for 17 years. What we had to do with, with Tom is find out what started this. And because it was really painful, he locked it away. They've travelled the world, developing their own form of therapy to help improve the lives of countless people. There's yeah, nothing you can't do. You it's quite amazing. extraordinary. Regulars on the This Morning sofa, the Speakmans have helped a host of celebrities overcome their fears. Going on here. Unbelievable. <laughs> and now they're allowing the cameras into their therapy sessions for the first time. Can they succeed where doctors and other therapists have failed? If you weren't born with the condition, then that means that you've had an experience in your life that has created it. You can be better. No doubt about it, you can be better. This is Karen's story. A mum of three, she met her husband, David, 18 years ago. Karen's suffering from a condition that's making it impossible for her to cope with everyday life. My phobia generally is people. Day-to-day -day life's really difficult. People are everywhere. If I go to the shops, I look down. I don't want to see anybody that I recognise. And if I do, I'll walk the other way. I'm a cleaner. I walk into a room in the school where there's a teacher and I just, I just break down. And I just want to get out. I, I just want to escape. I'm walking in here. This is a new teacher in this one and I've not seen who teaches here and I was worried in case he or she was sitting in here. And then I started worrying if this other teacher was sitting in there. And it just came over me. I didn't get the panic I wanted to get out because there's nobody here, but... This has got to stop. This is ridiculous. Having such a severe fear of strangers has left Karen struggling to hold on to her job, and she relies on her husband, David, to work alongside her. He remembers when her symptoms started to take over her life. It got worse 10 years ago. We moved here, she didn't have a job, had no friends, so I believe the problem impounded itself. Done. Let's be done. Thank you. We'll go running outside, shall we? Yep. That's what I usually do. Being petrified of people for almost a decade has left Karen suffering severe panic attacks, which can strike at any moment. When I get in a panic, I just want to get out. I just want to get out of the place. Um, David's usually around somewhere because he's always watching out for me. He'll come to me and he'll say, breathe, breathe, and he's a big comfort to me. She'll just be crying and it's sad because I haven't got phobias myself, so I can't imagine really what she's feeling. I don't know what I'd do without him, I really don't. Karen's fear of people means that she and David rarely leave the house. Her condition is now so extreme that even being around her own family makes her uncomfortable. Her daughter Anushka comes to see her at home, but the visits are very brief. Growing up, we were a close family. Sundays was the family day. Hi. Hi. You all right? Hi. How are you doing? Fine. <laughs> Bless. You. And now we just don't see her. We just don't see her. We, I, I speak to her quite often on the phone or pop round for a coffee, but any more than that is just too much. It's me and Logan, isn't it? Yeah. He's got bigger now, hasn't he? Mm, just a bit. So how old is he there? One. He's one? Mm. Five years ago. I've missed out on a lot. You have you got any missed... photos of me with the others? No. You haven't? No, I've searched for all the photos. It's just this one. I've missed out on my grandchildren. My eldest is 13 now, and I haven't seen her hardly at all. The other grandchildren are different ages, and I've just missed out so much. 
Karen's grandchildren live just minutes away from her house, but her anxiety means that she avoids spending time with them. I do feel very guilty about not seeing the grandchildren and staying away from the children. Um, it's not supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be like that. When they were growing up, we were very close, the children. But as soon as this started rearing its head, I haven't seen the grandchildren hardly at all. It's a situation that her son, Shane, is keen to change. I think my kids are missing out. It is hard for them when they go around there. It's hard for my mum because the kids don't attach to her. I'm past that one. This must have been just as we moved here when I wasn't too bad. That's probably the last time I took photos of them. Sometimes it does hurt because I know they could have a nice, but good relationship. Which was over 10 years ago, isn't it? It's such a shame. Wasted years, isn't it? <laughs> I know that mum loves and adores the kids, but it's the way that she can't be around them for too long. I am afraid of making a fool of myself in front of the grandchildren. Um, it's what people think of me, it's being judged, and the little children, they don't judge, but I'm still worried about them. I still think that I might do something and, and make an idiot of myself, and I do feel very guilty about that. Mum's back garden is huge, and. Just to see them playing out there, my mum, David, and the kids to, all together would be absolutely lovely. With her anxiety coming between her and her grandchildren, Karen's tried everything to cure her condition. After years of medication, counselling and self-help books, nothing has worked. To think about how I am and how I used to be, I just want to get over it. I just want it gone. It's been hard watching her change. Just over 10 years ago, she was bubbly, she was happy, and just watching her just slip into herself is hard to watch. I go around there just to have a coffee and just try and make her smile, and just, even if it's just for half an hour, I try and get my mum back to how she was. Karen knows her family are suffering, but she feels powerless to control her fears. If nothing changes, my future looks very grim. It's just the same as it is now, hiding away from people. It does seem to be getting worse. If this doesn't help, I, I don't see how things can change. They, my mum's not strong enough at the moment to force herself out of it. She, she needs the help. For Karen to get better, it would, there'd be so much closeness in the family. I want my mum back. I want my mum back and I want my kids to have their name. For the last 10 years, Karen has avoided spending any real time with her family, and her grandchildren don't even know who she is. Desperate for change, she's arrived at Speakman Hall with her husband, David. As soon as I walked through the gates, um, I saw a lot of people, and all of a sudden, I got a fear come over me. Um, I started crying and shaking. I stay very close to David. Today we've got a lady called Karen coming to see us and it would appear on the face of it that she's got a phobia to her family. As a mum, I find that really intriguing to understand how that could have happened. For someone who's terrified of people and new places, just coming here is a big step towards recovery. I'm feeling extremely nervous at the moment. There's a lot of people about and my anxiety is a bit high. I'm a little worried to hear what Anushka and Shane say. I don't get to see the children enough to be able to know how they feel about this, so I'm a little bit nervous about hearing what they've got to say. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Hello. Welcome Hello. to David. Hi. Hello. 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 It's so good to see you. Come on in. Come on, follow us in. Coming up, honesty. I haven't got a life. It's just me and you, and I'm, I can't plan for the future because I haven't got my wife with me. Truth. It sounds more like not a marriage, but a relationship between a prisoner and a jailer. And a promise. Are you ready for change? Definitely ready for change. OK. Mum of three, Karen, has suffered from a severe social phobia for almost a decade. Just being in public places is a harrowing experience. This has got to stop, this is ridiculous. 
So scared is she of what people think of her, Karen avoids leaving the house. She can't face spending time with her family and rarely sees her grandchildren. I've missed out on a lot. You have you got you any missed... photos of me with the others? No. You haven't? No, I've searched for all the photos. It's just this one. I've missed out on my grandchildren. My eldest is 13 now, and I haven't seen her hardly at all. The other grandchildren are different ages, and I've just missed out so much. Karen and David, thank you for coming to see us today. What's the problem? Uh, social anxiety. I get very upset when I, when I talk about it, <laughs> when I um, have to walk into a room where there's people. Um, if I think I'm going to walk into a room where there might be a person, I just break down in tears, um, I start shaking, I have to run out of the room, um, I can't breathe properly, my throat closes up and that could last for about 10 minutes or so, and it's happening on a daily basis. So what does that stop you doing, Karen? It stops me going anywhere on my own. Such um, as? Well, I have to have David with me all the time. I can't work on my own, I can't get a job on my own. I've tried that, I've just had panic attacks, and I've had to give up the work, mm -hmm. so I have to work with David. Um, I can't go to shops on my own. Sometimes David comes with me, as long as I know he's around, so if I get a panic attack, I can find him. I can't drive because I always think people are watching me and judging me. It stops my life. I can't see my family, my children, my grandchildren. I haven't seen them growing up because I just can't deal with people around me. Because? They scare me. Because? Um, I'm scared I'm going to say something or do something stupid. I think that they're watching me and judging me. So the reason that you are unable to interact with your family and the reason that you're unable to interact with the world is because you believe that everybody is judging you. Yeah. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. So can I ask, what magic powers does David have that can stop a panic attack? I don't think he's got the magic powers. It's just that he understands what I'm going through because he's been there all the time. Mm -hmm. And he's just like my rock. He's just there all the time and I know that I can run to him and I'm going to feel better. He does make me feel better. David, mm -hmm. that sounds stifling to me. Do you always do what she asks you to do? Yeah, always, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she should be in tears, you know, and you can't just leave her, can you? You've got that to... must be so draining, though, for you. It is. It's very draining, yeah. So when did this start? I believe she's always had it, but I do believe it's got worse in the last 10 years. What was significant um, that happened? 10 years ago. Well, ten years ago, we moved um, to Cornwall. My daughter was already living in Cornwall, and she said how lovely it was. We were living in Milton Keynes. Cornwall came up and thought, that's lovely. While I was living in Milton Keynes, I was working in a department store. I was dealing with a lot of customers, and even though I think I still had it on a day-to-day -day basis, I was just concentrating on customers, so it wasn't as bad as when all of a sudden I stopped working, I moved to Cornwall, I didn't have a job, I didn't see people, and then I think I started getting worse. So you moved there because your daughter was there? Mm, yeah. But you then, but you've said that you don't see your daughter? No. No, we don't see her. One thing that really struck Nick and I, you're a mum, you've got children, you've got grandchildren, mm. and you're each missing out yeah. on each other. How does this affect your children? I don't, I haven't asked them, I don't know. <laughs> I should think they probably don't like it. I mean, they're, all, they're closer to their in-laws than they are to their own parents. And how does that make you feel? That's upsetting. You're saying that as though you've already accepted that you've lost your children. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're lovely children. And I do know that they want to be part of my life as well. And I think they hold back because of my problems. But yes, I do feel as I'm losing them, or I've lost them because I just don't see them, I don't know. If you've resigned yourself to the fact that you've lost your children, then your grandchildren have got no hope whatsoever, have they? No, they don't know me. They don't know me at all. So how, how come, Karen, that you believe that David is the only person in the world that's not judging you? 
I think it's because I know he loves me and and he understands my problems, whereas other people out there are judging me and they don't understand. So, so your children don't love you? Yes, of course they do. What I'm still struggling with here is you're saying that David's the only person that doesn't judge you and he's the one that loves you, but I don't accept for a second that your children and your grandchildren don't love you. And I would like to know, Karen, when any of your children or any of your grandchildren have come along and judged you? No. No. Which doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that I feel as though I would be judged, even though I know they wouldn't. Right. So what you're, what you're doing, you're punishing a whole set of your family for nothing. Um, that's right. David, could I ask you to look at Karen and tell her exactly what this issue is doing to you? I haven't got a life. It's just me and you, and I'm a very social person, as you know. And I'd love to go out and I'd love to have people come round and grandchildren stay the night, even. I just... I, I can't... I can't plan for the future because I haven't got my wife with me. It sounds to me more like not a marriage, but a relationship between a prisoner and a jailer. Mm. Sorry. I mean, you, you want me to go out there and do things, don't you? You want me to go out there and, and have a life. I do, yeah. But I can't, and you're always having to look after me, always be there for me. If David wasn't there, though, what would happen then? I wouldn't go out. And end up a recluse. Yeah. One thing that's really difficult for me to understand is how you would expect a child to judge you. Because children, they don't really judge anyone or anything unless somebody's mean to them. Going back to your grandchildren, I've got a little message, Karen, from your grandchildren that I'd like to share with you. Hi, Nanny, I want to see you more. I love you, Nanny, but we don't get to see you much, so I love you. Aren't you come round more, have tea more? How do you feel not seeing Nanny? I want to see her. <laughs> so do I. We don't really get to see her that much. Not seeing her for long. What do you want to do the most for Nanny? Have dinner with her. At her Go house. out like places like for tea and then like places where we can actually see her for a long time. To a duck pond? Yeah, you just walk around feeding the ducks and you have loads of time to talk. <laughs> Love, Love you, Nanny. Love you, Nanny. I hope to see you soon. Love you, Nanny. That's lovely. How does that make you feel, Karen? That upsets me because I didn't. I don't think that they thought like that. I just thought that they, they thought that I was just their mum's mum, and that's it. You know, I didn't realise that they wanted to see me. I suppose I didn't think I was important to them. It seems to me, Karen, that this whole issue from start to finish that you have is based on your ability to read minds. You've got this ability, you read, you go anywhere and you read their mind and all they're saying is negative things about you. Mm. Well, I didn't hear anything then. No. All I can hear there is three children that are desperate to see you. That's all I see. And if I did see them more, I would know that they felt like that. But I don't know why they feel like that because I don't see them. So it's not just your grandchildren, it's your son and daughter as well, isn't it? So what we'd like to do is invite your son and your daughter. Because all I'm hearing is people that absolutely love you and adore you. I know you don't feel comfortable with them 
as of yet, but is it okay if we invite your son and daughter to join us? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. At the minute, I'm feeling really nervous, but hopeful. I don't know what the Speakmans are going to do today. I don't know anything about what's going to happen with my mum. I'm hoping Nick and Eva can make a better. Um, can't wait to get the day started, really. Anushka, Shane, thank you so much um, for joining us. Thank you. You've never really told her how you feel. And we understand that's because you love her, you don't want... You don't want to upset you her You don't want to upset your mum. However, today is about change. And for your mum, you know, your mum's been really strong and your mum wants to change today and you've got to help your mum to change by telling her exactly how you feel. It's hard. It's hard, I can understand that it's... It hurts you as well, not spending time with us and the grandkids, and... We do understand, but we just want our mum back. And what about the grandchildren? They just want their nanny. They just... They just want to get to know you properly. Um, and they want to be able to just come round and come and play. Even little things like photographs. We have no photographs of, well, you, grandkids. There's no recent photographs of us and the mum and David all together. Just building memories yeah. which we haven't got. So when they'll have the same memories as we've got of when we used to see Grandma when we were younger and we loved it. And then our kids to have the same memories with you and David. I want you to be totally honest over this. Can I ask you, have you ever judged your mum? No, I've never judged you. What about yourself, Anushka? No. Do you judge your mum? No, I don't, not at all, not at all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't judge her and my children wouldn't either. So Karen, what was that judging business that you were telling me before? Well, I always feel that everyone's judging me, even the grandchildren, but... They don't. No. That's what you just feel, but we don't. I know that you've all written letters today. Could I ask for you to start, Shane? Could you please read <laughs> your letter to your mum. <clears throat> to your mum. I think you're very special and would love to be in our lives. Holly, Chloe and Riley's life too. Since they were born, we haven't seen you as much as we would like to and the kids need you in our lives. We all miss the way you were, a happy, loving mother. We all hope you get better and as a family can get together and enjoy the years together. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Anushka, could I ask you to read your letter, please? Dear Mum, you will probably find our letters hard to hear, but we need you to know how much love and support we have for you. It's really hard knowing that you have missed out on so much in our, all our lives. We want nothing more than to see you enjoy time with the grandchildren. I personally would love to have a girly day out for lunch and shopping, but I know at the moment it's too much. Please know we're all here for you, but most of all, we just want our mum back. Thank you. Thank you. David? <laughs> Dear Karen, it really saddens me that you suffer like this. And if I could take your pain away and adopt it for myself, I would. This is something I can't do, but really hope that Nick and Eva Speakman can. I love you so much and look forward to a new chapter in our lives, a bright and happy one. How was it hearing that, Karen, from your family? Um. It was hard because I just don't feel important. And um, it was lovely to hear. Thank you, all of you. Where's the judgment? 
There is no judgment. OK, thank you. Would you mind reading your letter, please, Karen? I don't know if I can. I don't have to see it. Dear David, I am writing to let you know how much I appreciate everything you have done for me during this hard time when I've been having panic attacks. I know you are always close by me, whenever I need you. My life has been very difficult for me. I do try to be normal. I'm truly fed up with feeling this way. I want to change. I have to change. I miss you all very much in my life and I hope that things will change so that I can be a mother and grandmother you deserve. You don't need to be sorry. You don't need to be sorry. She's always your mum. She's always It doesn't mom. matter what she does, and you're never going to judge her. Never. No. no. OK. Obviously, we need to spend some time with your mum, so we need to say goodbye to you three. OK. How does that make you feel, mum? Because you're going you're gonna to have to stay with us. I know. <laughs> I'm worried. I'm worried because he's not going to be there. Well, this is where your new life starts, and all this stops today. Good. OK. Are you ready for change? Definitely ready for change. OK. Well, David, Anushka and Shane, it's time to leave. Thank you. For years, Karen had been believing something that was entirely not true. And anyone who's got a social phobia believes something, and usually it's the feel that they're being judged. And that wasn't the case. Anushka Shane and David read those letters to me. Dear Mum, you will probably find our letters hard to hear, but we need you to know how much you are missing and how much love and support we have for you. I understand that everything may feel so hard to deal with, but just think back to when you was a happy, bubbly person who would take on the world. It's really hard knowing that you have missed out on so much in our, all our lives. We want nothing more than to see you enjoy time with the grandchildren. I personally would love to have a girly day out for lunch and shopping, but I know at the moment it's too much. Please know we're all here for you, but most of all, we just want our mum back. And I had a letter to read to them too. I miss you all very much in my life and I hope that things will change so that I can be a mother and grandmother you deserve. It was difficult to hear because it made me realise that I've been hurting them as well and it's time to stop. That was really emotional. It was quite upsetting to know that she's been feeling like that. Have you ever judged your mum? Never judged you. Anushka, no. do you judge your mum? I wouldn't judge her and my children wouldn't either. Hearing that my mum thinks that we judge her, she's never said that to me before or my brothers, that was really hard to hear. And to think that the grandchildren judge her as well, it's none of us judge her. I love you, Nanny, but we don't get to see you much, so I love you. I didn't realise that they wanted to see me. What was amazing, having Karen's children to say to her, to her face, we've never judged you. We've never judged you. Where's the judgment? There is no judgment. Massive realisation. Maybe I've got it wrong for all these years. Great. It's a great moment. After the break, an ultimatum. That looks like a really happy, solid family. If you don't change today, this will never, ever come back. And Karen comes face to face with her past. There's one bully that we've not mentioned that's been bullying you for 19 years. And I want you to meet the biggest bully of all. On today's show, one woman is confronting an overwhelming fear. What's the problem? Social anxiety. When I have to walk into a room where there's people, I just break down in tears. I have to run out of the room. For the last eight years, Karen's found it difficult to leave the house without husband David by her side. Time to say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now, as her treatment session begins, it's time for Karen to go it alone.
It appears to us that you've totally split your family apart. Mm. Everybody's suffering, all because you believe that you are being judged. Yeah. You see, and I've got a lovely photograph here. Oh. Who's that? That's me with the three children. And what does that signify to you? That we are a family. These were happy times. I'm looking at that. I won't see a problem there. That looks like a really happy, fa solid family. Whereas now it feels like it's been ripped to shreds. That's right. If you don't change today, this will never, ever come back. You see, because yeah. what you've done... Mm. ..ripped to shreds. Yeah. I don't want that. Who's that? That's Lance. OK. We didn't meet Lance today, did we? No, no. No, he's had to work. OK. Let me pass these to you. Who's that? That's Anushka. You're Anushka? That's Tegan. When was the last time you saw Tegan? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> How old is she now? She's ten. Yeah. And there's Logan. I have hardly seen him at all. How old is he? Uh, he must be about five. I don't even know, really. Do you not think that's really embarrassing, not knowing the it age is. of your grandchildren? It is. That's Kira. She's 13. And I've hardly seen her. She was a little baby when we moved to Cornwall and I've hardly seen her since. Shane. I don't see enough of him either. I didn't realise it was affecting them as much as it is. How many of these people are judging you, even though you haven't found time for them? None of them. So we're faced with a choice, Karen. We can call it a day, and we can shred them all. Oh, you can take your family back today. I want to take them back today. Yeah. They don't deserve this, do they? So do you want to save them from the shredder? Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And do you know what? All the birthdays that you've never attended, all that stuff, all those people that were upset, none of them have judged you for it. Mm. Because they love you unconditionally. In fact, they love you so much that they're prepared to put themselves through pain to move away because they don't want to hurt you or worry you. Mm. I know that no one is born with self-esteem. It's something that we acquire. Mm -hmm. And once we acquire it, it can be something that we lose. So you tell me, who took your self-esteem away? Me. Usually, people with self-esteem issues, it goes back to childhood. And then something happens. And then after that, it sits there. Mm -hmm. So what's known as a schema. And it sits there and then something later reinforces it. So what happened to you when you were younger? I was bullied at school. The whole class was against me. They wouldn't talk to me. So without them talking to me, I just thought they were talking about me and judging me. And how long did that last? <laughs> Only a couple of weeks, probably. Was it physical bullying? No. Me, they threatened violence. I've never carried it through. OK. OK. How old were you when you got married? 17. Oh. I got with him when I was 15. Oh, he speaks volumes. Yeah. So it was just after the bullying. Not so you go either. straight from the bullying. You're not feeling great about yourself. You get in a relationship. So yeah. how long did that the marriage last? 14 years. OK. Well, I didn't have a mind of my own then. To be able to move on today and for you to change today, we need to confront the bully. Mm. Are you ready to do that? Mm. I'll do anything. OK. There's far too many people in your story suffering every single day and it needs to stop. And yeah. the person that can end this is you. Well, OK, put them down and come with me. So just stand facing our bookcase there. Because what I want to tell you, what I've just learned is that you 
got a bullet for two weeks at school. Mm. But there's one bully that we've not mentioned that's been bullying you for 19 years. And I want you to meet the biggest bully of all. This is the person that listened to the childhood bullies. You can't be a victim if there's no oppressor. So right now, what I want you to say into that mirror is that I forgive the school bullies, and most of all, I forgive myself. Exactly. We'd like to do that. I forgive the school bullies, and I forgive myself. Once you forgive them all, you stop being a victim. And when you stop being a victim, get on with your life. Mm. Have you accepted that you're a very, very loved lady? I have, yes. Yes, I have. And you've got a lovely family, and all they want, the one thing that they want more than anything, is to have their mum and their grandma back. Yeah. That's it. We don't want to let you go back to David until we know that you're 100% fixed and happy to live the rest of your life with David and your lovely family. So you tell me now, how do you feel about going in the shop and ordering something on your own? No David is a prop. How do you feel? Uh, yes, I'll try it. Come on, let's go. Come on, and well done. Just this morning, the idea of walking into a shop on her own would have been unthinkable. So, Karen, no David. No. Nope. A shop, and we'd like you to go in there and buy a book of stamps. I'm not sure what the Speakmans are doing at the moment. I think that they've got something magic about them, and I'm just hoping that he can use it on my mum. No and you're going alone, is that all right? All on my own, yeah. Yep. And there's a lot of people in there too. Yeah. Okay, go for <laughs> go it. Go for it. Okay. Hello, can I have a book of second class stamps, please? Of course, what do they come in? At the moment, 12s, unless you want a book of 100. I'll have 12, please. <laughs> I can do your loose stamps if you want loose stamps. I only wanted four. I'll do your four loose stamps. Okay, thank you. Oh, she's doing amazing. £2, 12 pence. Sorry about thank that, you. thank you. It's fine. Do you want a receipt with us? No, it's fine, thank you. Completely just comfortable. Gone just in and totally out. relaxed. Two, twelve. Five, That's five, lovely. Five, thank, thank you very much. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers, my dear. Thank you very bye much. Bye bye. bye. Oh, oh, is it easy? So it was, yes. Oh, no problem. No stamps. <laughs> Not at all. No. Nothing. No anxiety, nothing. Nothing, no. Uh, I didn't no. even take the first thing he offered. I asked for four rather than the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're showing off now. Come on. Wow. Get proud of yourself, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> Good for you. Next. Time to put the treatment to the test. Are you ready to go? I am, definitely. She's raring to go. Let's yeah. go. Aren't you? Let's Come go. on. Come, Come on. on. And make up for lost time as a mum and grandma. <laughs> For almost a decade, Karen has been so scared of what people think of her, she's found it difficult to leave the house. I can't walk into shops, can't drive, because I always think people are watching me, judging me. It stops my life. Her phobia stops her seeing her own family, and her grandchildren are strangers. That's Kira. She's 13. And I've hardly seen her. She was a little baby when we moved to Cornwall, and I've hardly seen her since. Before today, the idea of being in public places made Karen anxious. <laughs> Leaving her home to come to Speakman Hall has been a big step towards getting her life back. Can I have a book of second class stamps, please? Of course, what do they come in? At the moment, 12s, unless you want a book of 100. I'll have 12, please. <laughs> Since then, she's faced up to painful events in her past and found the confidence to go into a shop on her own. thing he offered, I asked for four rather than four. <laughs> so, Karen, we're here. You've really impressed us by walking into a shop and buying something with confidence. But the people that really, really need to see that you're actually over it to enable all of you to get on 
with your lives from now on in is your lovely family who are actually waiting in here. Are you ready to go? I am, definitely. She's raring to go. Let's yeah. go. Aren't you? Let's come go. on, come on. <laughs> Karen's phobia has come between her and her grandchildren. It's been eight years since her family were all together. I can't wait for my mum to get back, see the children, um, catch up with the family and just see how well she's done and fingers crossed that she's okay. What I'm picturing is kids all go and give her a cuddle, big hug and she, she's got no cares in the world and I hope that is what is going to happen. My mum doesn't know that her grandchildren are all here. It's going to be lovely to see if it's worked, her spend time with the kids. Um, we're at a lake so being able to feed the ducks with the kids and make some memories with them. That's all we want, really. Do you think David's going to be really shocked? Yes, I think he will be, actually, yes. Did, he, a big think, did he think you'd be able to get over it? He said he thought I would, but I don't think, in the back of I his mind, he was a little I think he want to believe it just in case yeah. as well, because... Yeah, because he's been with it so long. He's been with it, so he can't dare to let his guard down, yeah. can he? So it? what they're doing, they're facing the other way. So we're going to creep ah, up behind them. Ah, they are facing the other way. I can see, see them. them. Hello. 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 How are you? I'm oh, fine. Oh. Hey. How are you doing? Oh, great. Fantastic. Is it new year? Can Nanny cuddle us? Oh, good Can boy. Can you be waiting long? Can Nanny cuddle? Can Nanny cuddle? Uh, we've been having oh, fun, haven't we? Yes. We've been having fun, haven't we? Yeah. Oh. How are you feeling? Oh, fine. Absolutely fine. Oh, uh, yeah. I saw your this? video. <laughs> After just one session with the Speakmans, Karen's become a grandma again. She can now start to enjoy spending time with her grandchildren and looking forward to a happier future with her whole family. This is the Karen you've been missing for so long. Yes, amazing. She's smiling. Happy tears. <laughs> not, not miserable tears. Not miserable tears, happy tears. Uh, and guess what, before we came here, she went in a shop on her own bought some stamps and came out. Oh, wonderful. Oh. And you felt really at ease? Yes, I did. Great. Brilliant. Oh, thank you, guys. So you'll be able to spend lots of time with your nanny now and have lots of fun and do family things. So this is the Karen, the mum, the grandma that you've been missing out on for all these years. She looks so different. She does, doesn't she, by the way? It's just glowing. It's awful. It is, it, it is. 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 But you know what? You've all spent enough time apart so I really think it's now about catching up and spending time together. So we're going to leave you to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very well. We'll see you. Let's have a home. Karen knew that her son and daughter were here, but she had no idea that the grandchildren were here. So we brought her around. What a surprise. Seeing grandchildren that she'd not seen for years. We just saw Mum there with a great big smile on her face. She looked 10 years younger. She was so happy. Just seeing their faces today when they saw me and all the cuddles I got was amazing. We knew that Karen hadn't seen her grandchildren for years and all those grandchildren wanted to do was have their nanny back and just do normal things like feeding the ducks. OK, should we go and feed the ducks? Yeah, let's go and feed the ducks. Come on. The surprise on their face was fantastic. My kids are over the moon that they've got their nanny. Um, it's what they've always wanted. They've wanted to spend time with her, get to know her properly. And I know that they're all over the moon. She was smiling. She was the first time we've seen her out in a public place like this. And she was smiling the whole time. And it was lovely. She's back. I've got my mum back. Today means everything to me. I was a shell before. I didn't go out, I didn't see people, and when I did, I was terrified. But now, my life begins. It's just fantastic. That way. Is that that way, is it? What is was... There was just this moment of absolute pride and love, and it was a joy to share it. Nanny throwing some. Nanny's got to save this for Holly. Holly. Holly's nearly run out, and then she, Holly can have mine. There you go. That one. That one. Go throw it to the ducks. Don't want that one. No? No, don't want that. It's just amazing because Karen said 
I'm normal. And she is. Yeah. Yes, please. Oh, God. She's not frightened anymore. Fear's totally gone. She's got her life back. Come on, then. <laughs> you show me. I want to do